Chasers, the place where Benjamin Franklin's constantly get lit on fire. I'm surprised this one hasn't burned the building to the ground yet. Let's see if we can change that. We're on the wait list for 1, 2, and 2, 5. Let's get freaky on a Friday, boys. We go to 1-2 and look down at pocket 10s in the big blind. Four limpers to me, and that's just not gonna fly on my watch. You gotta pay two subway footlongs to see a flop around here. I raised the $20. Under the gun one calls, the cutoff calls, and the small blind ships it for $34. Does that reopen the pot? Uh, let's see, what do we got? 20, 14. 14 from 2 to 7. Uh, I don't understand what the numbers mean, but I do know that I get to act again. Since the other two players limped, then just flat called my $20, I think I have the best hand 99 times out of 100. There's $40 of dead money. I don't want anyone else in this pot. All in. Yep. I violently throw my chips into the middle of the table. The other players are terrified. They muck their cards, and we go heads up to a run out. And I saw a floor member coming over my direction. You're not allowed to record at Chasers, but then again, you're not allowed to smoke crack and people still do that anyways. So consider the floor members at Chasers like the police. You just got to avoid them at the right times and you can pretty much get away with it. Flop came King 8-8, eight, eight, turn 7, River Ace, and the small blind shows Ace 6 offsuit. So he scoops the whole damn thing. Off to a hot start. Shortly after this, I feel like Patrick Starr from the Spongebob episode where he's like, just move it from here and go there. Because we go from 1-2 to 2-5, and the very first hand we look down at is actually the same one we recently got busted with. So now it's our turn to inflict the damage. Out of the gun, one makes it $15. Middle position calls, and I call. Flop comes Ace Jack Deuce. Out of the gun, one continues for $35, which is on the larger size, but... I have an ace, so I'm not going anywhere. I call. Turns to the king of spades. I check it over to him again, and this time he checks it back. So I'm feeling a lot better about my ace now. The river brings another jack on board. So now we have two pair with a king kicker. I check it over to him a third time, but this time he doesn't check back. No, he has other plans. Under the gun one fires for $60. Not much of a decision for me to make. I can't raise. I don't think I can fold, which leaves one option. I flick in a chip, and we get shown the good news. Our opponent has Jack-10 offsuit for trips. Oh, God, that is so good, sir. Since spades worked out so well for us the first time, let's try again. Just a bit smaller suit in a bit better position. There's a limp from early position. Low Jack makes it $30. I call, and so do two others. The flop comes 7 6 2 two hearts. Lojack fires for $85. This guy had been super aggressive and fired every single flop when checked to. So I think he's full of it, but the issue is I only have a deuce. It's early on in the session. I decide to fold and wait for a better spot and take advantage of this guy's aggressive play. Hey, who's at the door? Oh, better opportunity? Yeah, come on in. Ace-King offsuit on the small blind. That's what I'm talking about, baby. The straddle's on, and there's two limps to me. I raise it up to $55, and the straddler and both limpers call. The flop comes just what we're looking for. 996. I had a higher chance of getting laid in high school than winning this pot, especially with such a loose player left to act. I decide to check, and the straddler doesn't disappoint. He bets $90. Then the button jams for 275. Not much of a decision for us. We fold, and the straddler also folds. So, guess he's doing this pretty light. Ace King didn't work out so well, so let's embrace our feminine side and try out Ace Queen. We're in the low jack. I raised up to $25, the hijack and big blind call. Flop comes 10 6 4. We didn't flop anything, but this flop might have not hit them either. So I see bet $40, and to my surprise, both of them call. So, all right, that didn't work. Turn is a three. This time I decide to slow down and check it. No one bets though, action checks around. River is a two, and now the big blind leads for $100. Again, we have an easy decision, it's just not the one I like doing. We fold. The hijack calls, and the big blind shows five deuce offsuit for a turn gut shot straight. Jesus Christ. Okay, all right. I think the most frustrating thing in poker is when you have a great table, but you don't pick up any cards. And then when you do pick up the cards, you whiff the flop, turn, and river. You can't connect 
Regardless, quick little story time. When I was in kindergarten, I bitch slapped the kid at recess and I got put on timeout. Now, our teacher gave all of us Twizzlers, but I wasn't allowed a Twizzler because I was a bad kid. And this is what it feels like to run dead at a card table that's super action because you can't get involved and you just have to watch the chips get facilitated to every other player at the table. But no, you want to get involved? Uh-uh, you, you can't touch. They're not for you. That's how it feels to be card dead at the best table in the room. And you can't do anything about it except for wait. But it's only been a few hours. The night is still young. Let's see if the tides turn around. Within 10 minutes of praying to the poker gods, we looked out at Pocket Jacks in Under the Gun 1. Let's go! Under the Gun raises to $15, and I 3-bet to $55. Small blind cold calls, and Under the Gun also calls. The flop comes about as good as it gets for Pocket Jacks. Ace, King, 5. Fuck! Under the Gun checks, and there's $150 out there, so I'm not too keen on giving up this easily. And this flop hits our 3-betting range. So I stab once to the tune of $80. Not much has gone right today, and it seems that case will be continuing as the under the gun calls. Ugh. This dude has been particularly sticky in the past, so I don't think it's a great idea to try to bluff him off a hand. The turn is a three, and the under the gun checks again. This time, I just had to check it back. River's a six, action goes check check again, and under the gun had an ace four. I think if I barrel turn and river, this guy folds because it's pretty hard to hang on with a weak ace, but I've seen this guy be stickier than Garrett Cole's hat on the Astros, so who really knows? Moving on, we're in the hijack with pocket nines. I make it $25, the button calls, then the big blind jams for around $100. I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio from The Wolf of Wall Street because- I'm not fucking leaving! <laughs> I jam. I instant. I'm in there. I'm in there all the way. 100%. No question about it. And the button says screw it. He throws it all in there too. He has about $100 behind. So we're three ways all in, boys. Let's go to a run out. Wait a second. Wait a sec. Jesus fucking Christ. Is the, are those, those are not. Those are not what I think they are. I know for a fact that I. I need a water and some Advil. Flop comes. Not much. Turn, I'm not paying attention. River, holy shit! We back into a straight! Oh, baby! We river the nuts! I guess this game's not so bad after all. <laughs> yeah! Hell yeah! We're so in there. Get it in bad and suck out. We should do this more often. Yeah, I like that part. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, it seems we used all of our run good within one hand because we run drier than the Sahara Desert for the next three hours. Pocket threes, whiff. Twos, whiff. King jack off, whiff. Ace jack off, whiff. Ten nine suited, whiff. A lot of whiffing, not much winning. Here we pick up king jack off in the hijack once again. Low jack makes it $15, and I three bet to 60. Only the low jack calls. Flop comes eight deuce dudes. We pick up pocket tens in the small blind. Under the gun one makes it twenty dollars, and the low jack calls. Action folds to me. I decide to three bet to one hundred and five dollars, which is five x the original raise, four x since I'm out of position, plus an additional x for the caller, and then five dollars because I was feeling spicy. You know, just rar. Sue me. Under the gun one folds, but the low jack calls. This information gives me a lot to work with already. Considering the low jack called twice, I think he's gonna have a lot of suited connectors and middling to low pairs. So when the flop comes queen six seven, all clubs, huh, that's pretty interesting. We do have a club in our hand, and I think we're still ahead here a good amount of the time. We're still beating eights, nines, twos, three, four, fives, and most of his suited connectors like seven, eight, eight, nine. If we're somehow behind, I can backdoor into a flush. So I see bet $65, and the low jack calls. The turn is the jack of spades, which brings another overcard to our pair. However, with how this hand is played, I don't think he'll ever have a queen or a jack here, so I'm not worried about it. But I don't see the value in continuing to bet, because all of his weaker holdings easily fold, and now I think we're only getting called by better. So, for that reason, I decide to check. Now the low jack leads for $150. I got the vibe that this was a bluff, and this is a small bet compared to the size of the pot, 
but I don't really want to see a river. There are a fair amount of river cards that I'm not sure I want to see, so let me just get the money in while I have a strong sense that I'm ahead. And if we are behind, well, screw it. I still think our club draws good. So I close my eyes and jam for around $400, and the low jack doesn't think too long before letting his cards go. So glad this one worked out. This next four or five minutes takes a turn for the worst. <laughs> we pick up pocket queens on the button. Cutoff makes it $45, and I 3-bet to a size of $150. Folds back to the cutoff, who 4-bets to $520 with about $200 behind. Well, that's certainly not a telling size. I painfully fold, and the cutoff had aces. Since queens didn't work out, let's humble ourselves. You know, bring it back down to earth. Take a step down. Let's try pocket jacks. I raised the $25. Low jack and big blind call. Flop comes king 7 6. I see bet $30, only low jack calls. The turn is interesting. It's another king, which is actually a good card because it decreases the probability that the low jack has one. So I'm feeling better about my pocket jacks, but I don't really want to blow the pot up. I check for pot control, and he checks it back. The river is not great. It's the queen of spades. I check it again. But the low jack does not. He bets $65. This is a really small size comparative to the pot. He could have 8-9 or just some random stuff. I flick in a chip, and the low jack shows king deuce of diamonds. This is like the table of misfits where only oddball hands can take down pots. I should just start playing 6-deuce. A few orbits later, we pick up queens once again in the cutoff. There are two limps to me, and I raise it up to $35. Only the big blind and the low jack call. Flop comes about on par for the day. King jack deuce. <laughs> I see about $55 and only big blind calls. Turn was a three of diamonds, which brought in the flush, but I have the queen of diamonds, so I'm not too concerned. Big blind checks it over to me, and with an overcard out there, I don't really want to blow up the pot, so I just check it back. The river is the nine of hearts, and he checks it over to me once again. I think I could turn my hand into a bluff here, because I double block Queen-10, and I have the Queen of Diamonds, but I've already lit so much money on fire today, I take the conservative route and check it back. I flip over my hand, not expecting to win all that much, but what I was not expecting is for the big blind to have Ace-King offsuit. Wow, he takes this one down, and I guess we lose the minimum. At this point, I start to get out of line. I open A7 suited. I call a $20 raise with 5-3 offsuit. I'm just starting to become undisciplined, which leads into this next hand. I raise to $35 and two limpers call. The flop comes 10-8-7. I think the best course of action is a check to see what the other players do. This board heavily favors the opponent's calling range, and it's gonna be really hard if I bet here and face a raise, which is exactly what happens in this case. I bet $30, under the gun calls, and then the cutoff raises to $110. Eef. Now we're already in a position which is a bit awkward. There's a lot of draws out here. There's a flush draw and a straight draw. So I think 10-9 is a possibility. He could just have a combo draw like ace nine of diamonds. With that being said, I'm gonna get sticky. I make the call and under the gun also calls. The turn is irrelevant. It's a four of spades. We check it over to the cutoff again and the cutoff moves all in for his remaining five or six hundred dollars oh man the issue with this turn card is it changes nothing so if my philosophy on the flop was there's a good chance i'm ahead then i have to commit myself here and make this call if i thought i was behind on the flop then i should just fold this turn changes nothing and i obviously thought i was ahead enough of the time to make the call on the flop which in theory means i should be ahead enough on this turn to make the call I think Under the Gun has a weaker holding than the cutoff because Under the Gun just called my bet and then called the cutoff's raise. So he flat called twice, but what does the cutoff have here? Is it possible that he just has Jack-9? He limped pre-flop, so it's certainly possible. What if he has 10-9 for a pair and open-ended straight draw? I think it's a close spot. I end up letting it go, but if I'm gonna let it go, I should have done it on the flop 
And if I'm going to call the flop and nothing changes on the turn, then I got to go all the way. At least that's how I feel. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments. Oh, yeah. I can't seem to do anything right right now, huh? Pretty frustrating session so far. I'm down $700, so albeit in perspective, it's not terrible. But I just seem to be making a lot of mistakes right now and not playing my best, so... I don't know. I'm still in decent spirits. It's cards. I've been running pretty well, and I'm still talking to some people, so, you know, in retrospect. I'm healthy, I'm living a good life, and I'm blessed to be able to play 2-5, so... With all that perspective, um, I'm happy with my life. And the cards aren't always going to be aces, aces, aces. And when I do get premiums, I'm going to run into aces. So, like, that's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, you know, it's going to happen. I'm not going to run like Jesus Christ every single day. And there's still three and a half hours left in this day. And we can definitely turn it around. So, what I'm going to do is just take 10 minutes to myself, go grab something to eat, come back, and we'll see what happens. So, yeah, down 700 bucks, frustrating session, but put things into perspective and it's really not that bad. So, we'll catch you in a little bit. Moving on, we have eight seven of spades on the button. One limper to me, I raised it up to $20. Both blinds and the hijack call. Flop is great, it's nine eight six. So we flop a pair and an open-ended straight draw. Action checks to me, I bet $50 and only the small blind calls. The turn, not as great. It's another nine. So when the small blind checks it over to me again, this time I check it back. The river is above average. It's another eight. We take a trip down to the harbor as we now own a boat, albeit a small one, which means a big storm in the face of a nine could still take us out. The small blind does his best Poseidon impression and fires out 125 chips. Ice snap call. And why wouldn't the small blind have ace nine offsuit? <laughs> like, why, why would he not? We had a sailboat and this motherfucker had a yacht. Nice hand, Captain. In this hand, we have ace jack offsuit in the small blind. There are four limpers to me. I raised up to $40 in order to isolate. However, five people make the call. Holy shite. Everyone and their mother goes to a flop of queen 10 4. I decide to check it because I'm not going to fire into a pot that's bigger than my family. And surprisingly, action checks around. The turn gives us an open ended straight draw. It's a 9. Here's where I make yet another mistake I fire for $150. I hate this play because if I'm going to check the flop, I should also be checking this turn and playing in flow, because again, there's still 64 other players left to act in this hand, and God only knows what they're holding. The big blind ends up calling 150, then the low jack jams. So, we have no choice except to get out of the way and fold. The low jack shows king-queen offsuit. He limped and checked the flop, so, I don't know. Here we look down at ace two of spades in the cutoff gonna save you the trouble we see bet turn an ace fire bigger then get raised and we fold the button's nice enough to show that he had us all the way when he flashes us queen eight since ace jack off works so well for us the first time let's try again we're in the big blind and there are two limpers to me i raised it up to 35 dollars going on the larger size to charge limpers with all of their weaker holdings now a little note for this hand some people at the table only bet when they have the effect of nuts. This guy was seemingly one of those people. I wasn't in the right frame of mind, though, and I didn't even realize until watching this back. I wasn't actively reading people's tendencies. I wasn't even paying attention to other hands. I was just in my own world of misery, you know? It's frustrating watching this back, seeing that I'm paying off people that I normally wouldn't pay off in situations that I shouldn't even be in. That's my little prerequisite prior to diving into this hand. Let's see what happens. I make it $35, and two limpers call. The flop comes ace 6 3 all spades. I do not have a spade in my hand, so I figure we can get value from all worse aces and any holdings that contain a spade. I see bet for $35. Only the limper in middle position calls. The turn is the eight of hearts. I decide to slow down and check for pot control. Middle position has other plans. He wants to blow this bitch up. 
he throws $85 into the middle. This is a major warning sign. It's starting to smell like the nuts, except I'm deathly sick with a disease called run bad, which terminates your sense of smell. So I see nothing wrong, and I make the call. The river comes aboard pairing eight. We improved a two pair with a jack kicker. I check it over to him once again, and he doesn't care that the board paired. He bets $110. It's at this point where I get the sense that I'm beat. I don't think that I'm ever good here, especially against this player, but I'm so frustrated at this point in the session, I just make a crying call, and I get shown Jack 10 of spades. Fun fact, banging your head against the wall burns 150 calories per hour, and after this hand, I'm feeling inclined to work out. Finally, we experienced a little bit of run good. In this hand, there was a four-way limped pot. Action checked all the way to the river. I threw out $5. One person called. Then a person in late position raised to $20. Action got back to me, and I'm sitting here with the ace high flush. So I bump it up to $65, and surprisingly, he calls. Thank heavens almighty, we finally took down a pot. I have a migraine. All right, there's an abrupt outro to this video because I didn't record one. We were in the game for 2,400, out for 700 or something. The graphics will be right here. We lost 1,700 on the day. Ran bad, played worse. That's uh, how it goes sometimes. Queens, Kings, Jacks several times. There was always an overcard, which I guess is normally the case because anytime you have kings, there has to be an ace on the flop. It's kind of a written rule. We had top pair, guy flopped the flush, guy flopped trips on us twice, guy flopped trips twice on us. We had a boat over boat, queens into aces. Missed a lot, couldn't seem to hit a flop. Overall, not much went right. It's got a cool all in though and sucked out on the river. So that was pretty fun. I hope you enjoyed nonetheless. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, see you in the next one, peace.